So now that we have seen the graphs and the zeros of the polynomials connected to the graphs, and of course, identifying the degree of the polynomial connected with zeros, now we'll see the relationship between zeros and the coefficients of polynomials. Let's see if there is any relation between the zeros of the polynomial and the respective coefficients of that polynomial. So let's come starting with linear, then quadratic, cubic, and etc. So starting with relationship between zeros and coefficients of polynomials is what we are going to understand here. So when it comes to, let's start with linear polynomial. Now clearly I know that the zero for this is when I take x equal to zero, when I take p of x equal to zero, I get x equal to the zero of p of x is clearly we have seen in the previous session that is negative b over a. Let's also try for quadratic the next polynomial of degree 2. So in case of the quadratic polynomial let's see what is the relation between the zeros of a polynomial connected with coefficients of polynomials. So let me start with an example quadratic polynomial in case of this. So let me take an example quadratic polynomial 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 where my coefficient of x squared is 3, coefficient of x is 5 and the constant is negative 2. So in case of this let me find the zeros by factorizing because I get the zeros by taking p of x equal to 0 implies 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 equal to 0 which on factorization gives me 3 times of 2 which is 6 times 1 subtracted gives 5. So therefore 3x squared plus 6x minus x minus 2 equals 0. Then I pair the first two and the last two so that on taking common I get 3x into x plus 2 minus of x plus 2 equal to 0 which on further simplification gives me into x plus 2 equals 0 is what we get when factorized. So each of them equal to 0 gives me x equal to 1 over 3 and x equal to minus 2 which are the zeros of the polynomial given out here in this example. Now with these zeros let me see how the coefficients 3, 5 and minus 2 are connected with this. So let me consider the sum of zeros which we have found out here, the two zeros which are found out here. So when I take the sum of zeros, I see that when I add up 1 by 3 with negative 2, I get 1 by 3 plus minus 2 which on simplification gives me LCM minus 5 over 3 is what I get as the sum of zeros. But clearly I see that this 5 and 3 are associated with the coefficients out here that this 5 is the coefficient of x and that 3 is the coefficient of x squared always. In whichever roots we find we see that sum of zeros for a quadratic polynomial is minus times coefficient of x by coefficient of x squared divided by coefficient of x square. Therefore, sum of zeros for a quadratic polynomial is <laughs> minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x square is how we identify the sum of zeros. Similarly, I take the product of zeros and see what exactly I get when I subtract both of them. So when I do the product, then I see that I multiply the first zero with the second zero, 
so that I get this as minus 2 over 3. But clearly, I see that minus 2 over 3 is also associated with the constants where minus 2 is the constant term and 3 is the coefficient of x squared. Therefore, product of zeros is identified for quadratic polynomials with a formula which states constant term by coefficient of x squared. constant term by coefficient of x squared is what we get when we find individually the sum of zeros and the product of zeros. So for a quadratic polynomial, the roots or the zeros and the coefficients are always connected for any quadratic polynomial taken in mathematics, which relates that when we add up the zeros, I get that equal to directly negative times coefficient of x by coefficient of x squared and the product of zeros directly is obtained by dividing the constant term with the coefficient of x squared is how we understand the zeros connected with a quadratic polynomial. Therefore, if I take the quadratic polynomial in general form as say p of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c then if I find the roots or the zeros of this, then if I say alpha and beta be the zeros, or we also call them as roots or x-intercepts in graphical form, zeros or roots of p of x equal to zero, then let's see how we can connect these roots with the coefficients. Now as I can say, clearly see that the coefficient of x squared is a and the coefficient of x is b and the constant term is c. Therefore I have the sum of roots or sum of zeros is minus coefficient of x by coefficient of x squared. So therefore the sum of zeros which I denote with alpha and beta with the sum as alpha plus beta would be minus of coefficient of x which is identified as b and the coefficient of x squared which is identified as a is what I get in terms of minus b over a. Similarly, the product which I identify as alpha beta is the product of zeros or roots is constant term which is identified as c and the coefficient of x squared which is identified as a is what we get in terms of this is how we get it. Now how do we substitute and convert this into the zeros form is the biggest question. So let me just take this back here where I have a x square plus b x plus c equal to zero implies I take a common and then since a is not equal to zero and a, b, c are real numbers. Therefore, I take a common and then I get b by a and then c by a equal to zero. Then because a is not equal to zero, this step leads to make me understand x squared plus b by a x plus c by a equal to zero since a is strictly not equal to zero. Can be taken to the denominator on the right side because it's a non-zero real number. Now this continued gives me, if I take this minus common and then I get minus b by a of x plus c by a equal to zero. The reason I have taken minus of minus is that I have minus b by a which can be substituted for alpha plus beta. Therefore this gives me x squared minus alpha plus beta times x plus the whole of c by a which is alpha beta as taken from equation 1 and 2. From 1 and equation 2 as obtained here. So this is how we get the roots connected with this. Therefore this can be understood as x square minus alpha plus beta which is sum of zeros x square minus 
sum of zeros times of x plus product of zeros equal to zero is how I understand the relation between zeros and the quadratic equation. Therefore, if the general form of a quadratic equation is identified with two of the zeros, then those zeros or roots can define the complete quadratic equation using this formula. Let's do one example problem to support this. How to do with just the roots given? If the roots are given, I can find the complete quadratic equation.